Welcome to my travel vlog. My name is Car, and for the next 30 days, I'll be doing an epic road trip from San Francisco to Texas with my twin sister. We'll be crossing through six states and driving around 2,600 miles. Stay tuned for some of the crazy adventures and situations we get ourselves into. So, I've been waiting a long time to visit Napa and Sonoma, and it's finally happening. In this vlog, we visit California wine country and go to some of the most well known wineries there are. Before I take you along to the wineries, I just want to quickly explain the difference between Sonoma. Sonoma and Napa and which one would be the better fit for you depending on what you're looking for. Sonoma is certainly less commercialized than Napa even though this area is almost double the size. It offers spacious vineyards, fewer crowds and has a much more laid-back vibe and is known as an affordable wine destination with budget-friendly tasting rooms which makes it an enticing alternative to Napa. Napa on the other hand is a must-visit for wine enthusiasts that seek the luxurious experience. Here you can indulge in upscale dining and exquisite wines. Just be advised that the tasting room prices are much higher than in neighboring Sonoma but they are well worth it if you're trying to live the Napa experience. And now without further ado, let's go taste some wine, shall we? Caroline is hoping that we're gonna get pulled over by a cop today because we're in wine country, so the odds are pretty yeah, good. No, I don't want to get pulled over today because today I, I'm gonna be drinking a little bit, so no, I don't want to be pulled over today. I want to yeah, be pulled today. over in middle America by some town a sober day. cop. You know? But just for the, for the record, we're not gonna be drinking and driving. No buzz, no buzzard drinking in this yeah, no car. Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but buzz isn't even tipsy. Buzz is below tipsy. You've got buzz, tipsy, drunk. Yeah. I mean, no, obviously, <laughs> they're the same. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been belligerently drunk. Belligerently. Well, I'm never gonna be able to come through. And that's how they missed their first wine tasting. <laughs> All right, let's jump right in. Our first wine estate of the day is the well-known Domaine Carneros, which lies right between Sonoma and Napa. Okay. You say it so much prettier than we do. Yeah. How do you say it? Domain Carneros? It Domain. sounds boring. How did you say it? Domain in French. I'm never going to hear it the same. And now. then <laughs> Carneros, I don't know, Carneros just sounds very Spanish. So uh, we're going to have to ask Carneros, like yeah. what the vibe is with Carneros the... Carneros does sound kind of Spanish. This chateau was built in 1988 and inspired by the Chateau de la Marqueterie in Champagne, France, which is currently owned by the Tattinger family. This land grows the Carneros grape, which is the second oldest grape growing in the northern region of San Francisco and is known worldwide for its superb Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grapes. The name comes from the Spanish word for ram, which refers back to when this land was grazing land for sheep flocks in the 1830s. We came here for a Bubbles and Bites experience, which will cost you $100 plus tax per person with a time slot of 90 minutes total. The chateau is absolutely beautiful, the views are breathtaking, the service is excellent and the wines are amazing. I really enjoyed our visit here and rate this winery 4.5 out of 5. Okay, a Sage Group Cuvée, so same year, 2018. Now we're going to add a little bit more Chardonnay and then we're going to start adding some sugar. So just a little bit of sugar, still pretty dry. Alright driver, take it easy on my champagne, yeah? <laughs> She's educated today. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the, the rosé here, this is what we're known for. Nice. Got that beautiful pink orange color. A little bit drier rosé, lots of strawberry, grapefruit. Cherry. Oh, lovely. Three days of uh, leaving the skin on, yeah? To get it nice and pink. Yeah. Lecker, car. Very nice. So good. Here we have Vietnamese style, style shrimp on rice noodles with the first berry. Okay, this is delicious. Sure. Cheers. I'm trying the. Wait, which one are you trying? I'm doing the Ultra Brut. I have the Estate Brut. Estate. <laughs> Estate. Estate. <laughs> Not that they asked, but Carr took the liberty of writing her reviews next to the, ta the, the tags of the wines. Nobody cares, Karim. <laughs> I wrote Fave, also great. A bit watered down, but that's okay. Whoa, sweet nectar. <laughs> Thank you, John. P.S. I'm already buzzed. Wow, wow what a wine. Wow. 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 <laughs> 
Off to the next winery, Round Pond. We absolutely loved this wine estate. It felt more personal and private. Even though Domain Carneros was excellent, it was busier. But Round Pond doesn't accept more than 10 tables per time slot, so it doesn't feel crowded or commercialized. We came here for the Gravel Series Wine and the Culinary Experience, which cost $125 per person with a 90 minute time slot. And the service was great and very friendly. The view of the vineyards was wonderful, and we had some amazing red wines here. Round Pond has been growing premium wine grapes since the early 1980s. The soil composition and microclimate here has proven ideal for the cultivation of Cabernet Sauvignon. I rate this winery 4.5 out of 5. Cute! They put the De Jong party! I love that Party of one! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a big party. <laughs> Strong, strong um, smell, my god. No, I think less. Woody. Uh, this gives me woody. Oh, well, yeah, they've all been in oak barrels, so yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not a prof. Round pot is a keeper. They're so good, no? These are quality wines. Class so 432. <laughs> we are troopers, Scott. Much needed charcuterie board and uh, digging in. Strong, well rounded. <laughs> Cherry. Also cherry. <laughs> Vanilla. Vanilla? Vanilla? <clears throat> the vow. Floral ar aromatics of lavender and violet yeah. mingle with rich notes of black cherry. That's Lush it. Flavors but it's of black plum, okay. blackberry, and blueberry. Are but this is more subtle. Hints of cocoa and long pepper spice. Wow. Touch of licorice on the finish. Licorice. Brown ponds, amazing. And look at all the, look at the winery around us. I mean, it's a great. Thing. They got a great driveway. As far as the eye can see, you almost want to just grab a grape and try, and try it, right? Yeah, do it. Do it? Of course. Come here. Theft! Wow. <laughs> wow. Here we're on our way to Ingle Nook and we absolutely loved this winery. The surroundings and chateau on this property are so elegant and beautiful. This property was relatively new in Napa. It was purchased by Captain Gustav Niebaum in 1879. Much later in 1975, Francis Coppola purchased a portion of what had been the Ingle Nook estate and vowed to bring it back to its original glory, which they managed to do in 1995. Inglenook is most known for its Bordeaux-style blend wine called Rubicon, which was first produced in 1978. We actually got really lucky with this winery because we didn't manage to make any reservation here to do a wine tasting or a tour, so we kind of just showed up and got to talking with some kind gentleman who turned out to be in charge of the winery. So, lucky us, we were invited to behind-the-scenes tour of the property and Infinity Wine Caves with even a complimentary wine tasting, which was incredible because the tour is $150 per person and the wine tasting ranges anywhere from 75 to 125 per person. It was truly amazing, the wines were actually some of the best we had so far in Napa, especially the Rubicon and the Blancano. And I just want to thank David, the hospitality manager of Inglenook, thank you so much for your kindness and time, we were very grateful and your kindness really made our trip in Napa. This winery gets a 5 out of 5 rating. We're at the Inglenook winery in Napa. Another butte, as you can tell. We've been drinking in Napa, but we haven't really had a, like a, a tour of the winery the vineyard. itself. The vineyard. Yeah. So let's see. People here are so nice. We don't have a reservation and they're just showing us all the spots and showing us around the winery. It's gorgeous. The barrel room. Look at these massive barrels. Wow. That's wine for a lifetime. I love the chandeliers. <laughs> or at least one year in a pandemic. <laughs> Francis? Francis, Mr. Coppola. Oh, this private lovely viewing, little... Private viewing spot. It's so fancy. And the Centennial Cellar. Centennial Cellars. Wow, the vintage wines. Yeah, so nice. Beautiful. Just to be in the presence. <laughs> and special kitty. <laughs> okay, guys, don't touch the glass. I'm coming. 
dusty old bottles of wine. Is there anything better? <laughs> Centennial bottles, green. So how much it costs? Crystal? It's William Yoward Crystal. $445. Oh my God. William Yoward Crystal. Keep Noah away from the glass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, <laughs> After we got a tour of the museum and the tasting rooms, David took us to go check out the wine caves. He really is super knowledgeable and also very funny at the same time, so I really enjoyed this extensive private tour. The tour of the Infinity Caves, as they're called, was quite impressive, and I definitely advise you to do this on your visit here. We had a heat spike on this property, like 115 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't okay. know that. Yeah, it's hot. hot. <laughs> what that does is it pushes all, the, all, that, all those grapes to ripe almost at once. Right, you don't want and, that. Um, it's not like quick you harvest. Many, then. You've got too many to harvest that all at once. Exactly. Right. right. And if you don't have the tank space, uh, then you're you catch those grapes. Well, now you're kind of triaging your vineyards. Yeah. The best grapes come in first. And then the other ones, they have to wait for the 20 some days of fermentation, yeah. clean the tank, and now it's their turn. Well, now that fruit can be a little ripe. Yeah. So, you know, all of this expense really is an attempt to gain control over something that most farmers don't have control over. The weather, the weather. yeah. You know? Yeah. How many liters is more than... They're all different yeah. sizes. Grapes at that time, so. They're all different sizes, and so yeah, I know them by tonnage. So this is like uh, 15 tons, these big ones. And these are really for blending. Like when, when you finally decide what the blend is on a certain wine. So anyway, bringing those grapes in, uh, I mean, we take every precaution necessary. To, to keep people safe, but it's such a busy time yeah. that with all the comings and goings, invariably somebody falls in. No. But that's course. how you get a full bodied wine. <laughs> <laughs> this has such a like full bodied, someone must have fallen in the tank on this one. Yeah. The right. smell it's of a, it is so full, and then the like taste of it is so. It's a like, ah. <laughs> good such a Hector. Soft, yeah. You died for a good cause. <laughs> but the taste is the so taste subtle. Is so soft. Yeah, 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 it's, it's more so nice. elegant. Yeah, right? exactly. And someone actually said that, Frenchman said this. He says that, that, that the, the style of winemaking is actually more feminine in nature. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? But there's a lot of, as you know, a lot of subtleties in wine that make all the difference. Yeah, definitely. Right? Mm -hmm. And you'd expect somebody from France to say this next thing. He says that a great wine should be mysterious, like a woman's perfume. You should not be able to easily analyze it. Those are his words. So he must have bagged a lot of ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in wine, what would that thing that would what would grab your attention away from elegance? Well, tannins that aren't integrated properly. Mm -hmm. Too much or too little oak. Right? Yeah. A big one for Philippe is the ripeness of the fruit. Since if you let that fruit ripen too long, and right. we talked about this, yeah. right? Then these overripe flavors will dominate. Yeah. <laughs> That's the perks of the job, eh? That's the perks of the job, eh? How nice. The Davids guys are getting a major brownie points on this trip. This is the second David today to do us a massive favor. The first David was the one that brought us breakfast, and the second David is the one that uh, gave us the tour. <laughs> that they invited us to have. <laughs> the next winery on the list was one that seemingly everyone goes to and is quite known in the area, so we thought this must be a good winery to visit. However, my actual experience there proved a bit different. First off, this place is really commercial, which makes sense because the prices are a lot lower than other wineries in this area, so it does get a lot of visitors. We ended up paying $55 per person for an outdoor premiere experience, which means we got to pick 5 wines out of the menu of around 12 wines. Also, there's an adjacent picnic area which is just crawling with kids. The whole environment and atmosphere was just a bit too informal for me. And on top of that, the wines didn't thrill me. There are of course some upsides to this place, especially if you're traveling with kids. This place is perfect because kids are loud. And luckily the staff members were very friendly and chatty, which makes me give this winery a rating of 2.5 out of 5. Cheers! Well, I'm trying the Colina d'Oro Chardonnay from the Russian River Valley. Mm, fresh. And car. I'm doing the Sauvignon Blanc from the Napa Valley. All right, so I'm not a fan of the one I chose. Very strong flavor. Oh my God, it's so sweet and so strong. So sweet and so strong. You can check how much alcohol's in there by the amount of drops that run down. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. There they are, the drops. This one, on the other hand, the Sauvignon Blanc from Napa Valley is exquisite. Vanilla. So good. Okay. This one is really good, Car. I like this one. Dry. 
we've got the dry Riesling and the off dry Riesling. Yeah. And on Vider North Coast. Yeah. Mine sweet, not in red. Um, is this the off dry? Yeah, this has got to be. This one is also natural. really sweet. <laughs> this is basically the moment I found out that I have an AI car that just drives itself, which came in very handy because we had another 25 day road trip ahead of us. Anyway, small side note, here we're on our way to the last winery on our list, Castello di Amorosa. This is also a pretty well known winery in Napa, frequented by a lot of people. But let's start with the positive first. The castle is absolutely beautiful, it takes wine tasting back to the middle ages, which is pretty cool. The wines themselves are okay, I like two out of the five wines I picked, but the service here is seriously lacking. Your port a glass with Without any explanation at all and then you get to wait 20 to 30 minutes for someone to come and bring you your second glass and so on so forth until you've had your five wines it was very frustrating as i would have loved some information about the wines or the castle but i guess for the price of 30 dollars per person i can't be expecting a vip treatment either so this is why i rate this winery three out of five stars all right guys that's it for today's episode i hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to like comment and subscribe below i would really appreciate it and hopefully see you on the next episode until then see ya